Welcome, everyone. We're so happy to have you here on this beautiful Wednesday evening to talk about money, uh, everyone's favorite topic, um, a topic that has a lot of power and a lot of emotion behind it. So we're going to get into some of that and work through some of that and think about tools to to have these conversations with your co-op and your your cohorts. We are part of an ongoing workshop series that is supported by the City of Austin. It's a partnership between the Austin Cooperative Business Association. Drew De Los Santos is here from that organization this evening. Uh, the Texas Rural Cooperative Center, I'm here representing TRCC, and then NIL Consulting, which is Ryan NIL, our housing co-op expert, and Sue Ellen Jackson, who is our marketing expert. So we're the Austin co-op coaching and training team. And we provide not only trainings like this every month, but also free uh, mentoring coaching and assistance services. If you are trying to start a cooperative or you're considering a cooperative, uh, we would love to speak with you. The city of Austin invests, uh, invests city money to make sure that we're able to support more co-ops growing in Austin. So let us use their money to help you. Um, we have a certificate program uh, one of our attendees this evening, uh, at least she was here a minute ago, yep, Susan Anderson, will be receiving a certificate next month. Uh, a certificate means that Susan has completed five webinars in our ongoing series of webinars. Um, there's more information about the the certificate program available from us, if you email us, I was going to say on our website, but that would be inaccurate. Um, but you can email us about it. We can discuss how you too can become a certified cooperative business expert here in Austin, spreading the word. Um, we really want to thank you for the time and energy that you put into co-ops. And part of how we can thank you is by giving you a credential that you can put on your resume. You can put it on LinkedIn. Susan, we're working on making it a real thing you can put on LinkedIn, like a little badge. Um, so come, come to our, our uh, next webinar is going to be in November and it will focus on uh, uh, conversions. So taking an existing business and transforming that business into a cooperative. Drew's going to be leading that session. And, uh, so that's going to be the third Wednesday of um, of November. I'll put the link in the chat in a little while. Um, but before we get to November, there's October co-op month, the beautiful month of October. So many wonderful things are happening in October. Uh, most especially, Drew, do you want to talk about the co-opolis extravaganza? Yes that I just named? So <laughs> uh, we have two e events coming up in October in person. So on October 1st, we have a co-op social where you can come to Black Star, uh, which is a consumer co-op uh, pub and brewery. And um, that's from four to seven on Sunday, October 1st. And uh, Black Star is actually creating a beer in honor of co-op month. and. Austin Cooperative Business Association, so that's exciting. Um, but yeah, even if you don't drink, you can still come out. Um, they have plenty of non-alcoholic drinks and delicious food. Um, and then on October Thursday, October nineteenth, we are doing a co-opportunity fair, and that it, we're going to have tables from various cooperatives um, to who are looking for board members, who are looking for new co-op members, who are hiring, um, and just have an opportunity for folks to meet other co-opers. Uh, we'll also be setting up a table to learn about Seed Commons, which is a non-extractive uh, loan fund that um, ACB Austin Cooperative Business Foundation has started um, and joined a, a national group uh, to make it easier to start co-ops and get financing to start co-ops. Um, and so, yes, please come out 
And you can see, yes, Annalise put the link in the chat. You can see those dates and times there. And I'll be there at both of those things. So would love to meet y'all in person. Um, and that is the calendar. Thank you. That'll take us pretty much through the end of the year. And we're currently working on our workshop schedule for 2024. So if you have something you want to learn about that you feel passionate about that we haven't touched on yet, or at least you haven't seen us touch on it in the in the webinars that you've gotten to attend, let us know. We would love to make this a resource that really works for you. I am very pleased to introduce you to two of the members of, uh, of a Johnny group. It's a new tailored accelerator that serves and educates underinvested communities to build successful, resilient co-ops and small businesses. Um, they honor their shared legacy by strengthening and empowering BIPOC and disinvested communities. Ajani is 100% employee owned. It's a worker cooperative and works all over the country. Um, so they're here with us tonight. And they maybe they'll be in Washington State tomorrow. Who knows? They could be anywhere. Um, their services include co-op and small business, business development, marketing and branding, urban and community planning, technology innovation, and they're committed to working collaboratively and value cooperative principles. They're an incredible group and a really amazing emerging resource in the cooperative space. I think Co-ops are so challenged to find uh, to find help that is both educated about cooperatives and affordable for people to access. And so we're really excited to be able to bring you a Johnny group without any further yabbing of the dab by me. A Johnny group, take it away. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Esther West and uh, Maeve and I are mem worker owners of the Johnny Group. Um, just wanted to give quick introductions. Um, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and start Maeve if that works and then pass it to you. Uh, so yeah, so I'm worker owner Johnny and I'm also a loan officer at Shared Capital. Um, I research co-ops in prisons with Dr. Jessica gordon Nemhard. Um, have researched that next co-ops. If you look up that next co-op power report, you can check that out. Um, I'm on the board of the, and I'm on the board of the Association of Cooperative Educators. Um, I've also been a worker owner myself at Equal Exchange for five years in from 08 to 13. So between that and Ajani, I try to bring that to all my work that I do with co-op organizing and lending, you know, really trying to think of like from the worker owner perspective, right? Um, yeah, and I have various other backgrounds with co-ops as well. Um, and I'm going, and Maeve, do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> yes, thank you, Esther. And Esther's been modest too. She just won like a, a really uh, prestigious award at the ACE conference <laughs> oh, thanks, uh, not too long ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, my name is Mabry Davis. Um, I'm also a worker owner with the Johnny Group. My specialization is accounting and finance. Um, I'm a CPA um, and I've been doing that oh, since about 2015. And uh, started working uh, with co-ops uh, in 2017 when I joined the CE Commons Network. So shout out again to the CE Commons Network. We're all over the place. Um, you'll also uh, notice uh, some of the materials we may review today um, are, were also derived uh, through the CE Commons Network and as a part of the way uh, that we develop and um, help to make uh, access to capital and the business planning and stuff accessible um, to folks. Um, you know, lots of help, helpful and useful uh, practical tools. Um, so I serve as the director of lending as well outside of Ajani uh, with New Economy Works West Virginia. Uh, similar to what you guys have setting up uh, down there in Austin. Um, 
So looking forward to working with y'all and seeing y'all on Project Stewart calls every couple of weeks. Um, yeah, so just excited to be here and, um, you know, to have this conversation about money with you all tonight. Yeah, thank you, Maeve. Maeve's a gem, a gem to work with. Um, and uh, yeah, like uh, maybe we could share the um, PowerPoint. Let's hear. I think. Do y'all want to do the the little video clip first, oh, yes, or you yes. want to wait? I'm sorry. We could do. Let's do the video. Let's get. Okay. Let's do that. That works. Thanks. Here it comes. Awesome. Hard work, hard, play hard, work hard, play hard, work, 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 work. Diamonds all in my ring, player. Go watch, go chain, player. Hundred thousand champagne, player. Yeah, my money insane, player. Yeah, I'm making it rain, player. But I was just on a plane, player. Buying gear, flying here. It ain't which word is my time of year. Uh. Yeah, I'll give y'all a little overview. So what you guys are watching is the way we engage uh, in the community um, with money and finance, uh, budgeting. Uh, so what you're watching is uh, the budget game. Um, they have, uh, they either do it individually or in teams. Um, and uh, they have 60 seconds to put together a balanced budget. Um, so they got to cover their uh, housing uh, expenses. Uh, they got to cover their housing, uh, food, transportation, uh, and they have to also consider some savings. And they have a three thousand dollar budget, and they got sixty seconds uh, to balance all of that. Um, so it's it's just fun to uh, do in the community with kids and adults as well. You want me to keep going? Yeah. I got so much money, I should start a bank. So much paper right in front of me, it's hard to think. Buy so many bottles, it's gonna be hard to drink. But I'm still growing up, and my family here, and they rolling up. So, uh, the bigger the feel, the harder you fall. Well, I'm throwing mine, cause my money long. The quicker you're here, the faster you go. That's why where I come from, the only thing we know is, uh, the bigger the feel. Nice. So, yeah, one of our goals is to make money accessible and, like, relevant. And I feel like, like, I know for myself, sometimes it can, you know, I didn't always see myself as, like, I, I, I'm still working on it, but, like, a financial person, right? And I realized I had to shift my own mentality, you know? So, I, I feel like what Maeve does with, with, uh, with kids and also adults is, like, you know, like I feel like game gamifying these things can really help. So that's a technique in itself that you could even use within your co-op, right? Um, so yeah, today we're going. Our theme, our theme. Uh, next slide, if you don't mind. Our theme is. Um, oh, do you want to say anything else? Okay. Our theme today. Uh, our, our our theme is participatory budgeting and transparency, and we're going to talk about cooperative budgeting in particular and start with talking about the key which is trust building like how do you lay that foundation um sometimes like finances can seem a little like like numbers can seem a little disconnected from the people side of things but in co-ops those are those ideally are thoughtfully intertwined you know and um so we're going to talk about the spectrum of examples and ways you can do that um, in a co-op um, to have more uh, participatory activity around finances. So we'll talk about financial training and education, engaging worker owners and finances regularly, participatory budgeting. Um, we'll briefly discuss financing conversion to co-op um, as another, you know, another way to build a solidarity economy. And at the end, we'll co-create a list of ways to be participatory in finances and have like next steps for your co-op. Um, 
So yeah. Um, next slide, if you don't mind. So Ajani, here's our here's our full membership. We have um, six people, and we're all throughout the country. Um, and I think I think what's really it's really powerful. Um, not only our mission to have more cooperative organizing and outreach and education uh, by and predominantly for, but for everyone, uh, BIPOC communities. Um, but also you'll see, um, we'll discuss some of the trust building that we've done um, shortly. So yeah, and how that can be applied to your co-op and then the finances. But first, we want to do a little introduction. So, I was wondering. Um, I think I think I'll I think uh, we'll just go through. I'll I'll go through and call on people. Normally, I'd do popcorn, but just because it might be hard to like keep track of everyone. Um, so I'll call on people in the order of my screen that you're on my screen, and if you can just share your name and your co-op and about it if you're with with a co-op, and then briefly share one thing you would like to get out of today's workshop. So yeah, so we'll just do that quickly. Um, but want to get to know you guys a little more and just like make sure we're tailoring it, tailoring it to what you want to hear. So yeah, uh, Carolyn, would you like to start? Oh, yeah. Is it me, Car uh, Karen? Okay. Uh, I'm Karen Cavanaugh, and I work for Resources for Learning. And we are technically not a co-op yet, but we are in the process of, um, we're going through a conversion to, to become a co-op, um, which has been a, a exciting and frightening process all at once, but we've been getting amazing leadership from Annalise. Um, one thing I'd like to get out of today's workshop is to have a, a better understanding about the financial implications of, of running a co-op because I am truly not a financial person. Like not one ounce of my being is a financial person. So uh, that's why I'm here. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Allison. Oh my gosh. It's like you knew we were at the same organization because of our background. <laughs> I'm Allison. I uh, work closely with Karen. Um, so we are in that conversion process. And I think one thing that I would like to know is we have recently come to the understanding that we are not the accountants, but I want to know the right questions to ask the accountants to ensure that we understand financially where we are in this, both during the, the process of conversion and then some measures of success once we um, are actually a co-op. Perfect. Thank you. Erin. Hi, I'm Erin. Um, I'm a worker owner at Natural Magic Co-op. Um, I'm on the board of directors in the financial team. Um, I guess I got asked to join that team because my I'm pretty good at math. I have an engineering background, so I'm uh, hoping to pick up some vocabulary, financial vocabulary, and just uh, know more about what those are so that I can do the math. Excellent. True. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I, my name is Drew De Los Santos. I, I live at a housing co-op, so we still, we do have budget conversations and we're trying to buy our house or a house. And so, um, like knowing more about how to prepare a budget for that kind of thing is important. Um, I also do uh, the business coaching and work with several different co-ops around town that are getting started or wanting to get converted. And so um, I'm excited to learn more about um, how to talk about it as a group and set up that participatory culture from the beginning. Um, I thought the game was really cool. So stuff like that would be interesting to learn more about too. Thank you. Susan. Hi, I'm Susan. I'm not actually officially affiliated with any co-op. I'm just 
um, very eager to learn and um, wanting to immerse myself in co-op knowledge. So I'm here. <laughs> Welcome. Awesome. Let's see here. Um, Matt. Hi, uh, my name is Matt Stevens. Um, I don't work at a co-op yet, but hopefully one day I can. I am a member of uh, Wheatsville Food Cooperative. Uh, I recently joined there. Um, that, so that's cool. Um, one thing, so what I, I'm kind of curious about uh, participatory budgeting. I, uh, I feel like I understand personal budgeting and personal finance, but doing it in a participatory way is really interesting to me. So I'd like to learn more about that. Excellent. Thank you. Jenny. Hi, I'm Jenny. Um, I am here with Brass Ovaries. We're trying to convert to a co-op, um, but I also just love the co-op business model in general, and I'm super excited to just keep learning more. So I'm just kind of here to just soak up, you know, the knowledge and, and uh, understand like what pitfalls we need to look out for and all that good stuff. Awesome. What's your co-op do? Uh, so we're a pole dancing studio and oh. we're not a co-op yet. <laughs> but okay. We're working on it. Thank you. Sounds good. Awesome. Uh, Safa. Yes. Hi, my name is Safa al Uh I am uh, a part of the steering committee uh, supported by Go Austin, Gava, Vemus Austin, uh, it's an initiative to start a co-op. Um, and what I want to get here is to to have an I a clarifying uh, between the border between uh, co-op versus the other uh, other financial uh, work. Like we all have, maybe some of us have experience in financing. Uh, small business individual, but now uh, because I'm working for the co-op, I would like to see uh, what what is the most important thing that co-op is different from the individual one. Excellent. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let's see here. Elita, how do you say your... Uh, Altifat. Oh, El beautiful. Yeah. Altifat. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Hello. My name is Altifat. I work with Co-op. And then I'm very excited. I work with them. Awesome. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Anything you want to get out of today in particular? أي شيء بدك تعلمي اليوم بالضبط. Sorry, but Elifat doesn't speak much English, but she is eager to learn, so she she can understand a little bit. But I'm translated in Arabic. Thank you, I appreciate it. Awesome. طبعا يعني كل شيء ريد نتعلم من يومهم. شلون نستخدم ال يعني الماء. يعني كل شيء. She would like to know how to use money. In such project. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Excellent. Christine. Thanks, Esther. Hi, everybody. My name is Christine, and I am from Freedom Dreams Cooperative Education. Uh, we're a we're up in Canada, and we are co-op developers and educators. And we support um, Black, Indigenous, and person of color like co-ops. Um, you know, cooperative finances is one of the number one things that the co-ops that uh, we work with ask for more education on. So I'm here in a learning context to, um, you know, uh, yeah, really just to see this workshop in action and learn and see what knowledge and insights we can bring back uh, to better support our co-ops. Thank you so much. Excellent. And Zia.
Hi, um, I'm Zia. I am the founding member of Trunk of My Car Cooperative. It is a burgeoning um, self-publishing cooperative, um, but wanting to uh, revamp the idea of self-publishing into community publishing. Um, I am here to figure out how best to spend um, funds when you get an unexpected boost of funding and um, how to make it a democratic, uh, like the particip participatory budgeting, how to make it a democratic process on what to do with these things um, because we're just starting out and we recently won a fellowship and that came with a stipend and now what? Congratulations, that's that's awesome. Um, that sounds real good. And I love your Instagram. Just going to say, <laughs> yes, I I see I see all the work that you put into it, at, or you know your co op puts into it. So I appreciate it. Um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, let's see here. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um. And let's keep going to uh, Chris, uh, Demetrio. Demetrio, uh, yeah. Demetrio may have stepped away. He is he's one of my colleagues at the S Center for Sustainable Agriculture and Rural Advancement in South Texas, and so he teaches people how to farm and helps to create uh, really helps people to create their farms. And so we have we have a few different projects uh, in collaboration with his team learning about potential for farm worker owned cooperatives or other co-ops that that might impact people living in agricultural areas. Okay, excellent. Let's go to Ma Esther, who great name by the way. Sí, buenas tardes. Mi nombre Yo pertenezco al comité de una futura cooperativa aquí en Austin. Estamos trabajando, aprendiendo, y estoy aquí porque quiero aprender más sobre finanzas y todo lo que todo lo que nos enseñen. Estamos en ceros, no sabíamos nada, entonces este, entre más conocimientos agarremos mucho mejor. Excelente, gracias. And do, um, could we have interpretation just for the rest of the group too? <laughs> um, would that be possible? So sure, I can interpret that one. Oh. Um, she's wanting to learn more about finances, and she's glad to be part of the conversation. She's wanting to learn more about it. Yep. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I forgot. Thanks, there was, Julian. Like, and it, well, they it we only have one interpreter, and so we don't really have interpretation ability from Spanish to English, unfortunately. It is a challenge that we're working on. Okay. Um, but we've got English to Spanish. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, Julian. Um, hi, my name is Julian Rodriguez. Um, uh, just like Susan, I'm, uh, <clears throat> not, uh, I'm a member of several co-ops, uh, Blackstar, uh, Wheatsville, but uh, as for working for a co-op, I'm not, but I'm here to learn as much information as I possibly can. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, and John. No, John message in chat. And I think we're I think we got everyone. Did we get everyone? Missing anybody? Okay. All right. Well, let's keep going. Um, thank you so much. It was really helpful. Appreciate it. And and today we're going to. Um, uh, I think we did miss one person. Oh, sure. um, I'm sorry. John Lowe, I believe. Uh, so I'm going to just read his. Okay. John Van Lowe, his, he said his mic isn't working at the moment, but his name is John. Uh, he lives at uh, Laura Union Housing Co op, uh, prior uh, web hosting uh, dot co op, uh, co founder 
uh, current ACBA.coop uh, board member. Always love hearing from people who are active in the space and specifically helping others start co-ops as you are. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah. And just a heads up, today we're going to focus a lot on like framing finances in your co-op and some detail, um, but just feel free to like check in and ask questions throughout. Um, yeah. So maybe you want to take it away. <laughs> Yeah, thank y'all for um uh for those uh for those introductions. I'm gonna burst your bubbles a little bit. Um we're not getting into a whole bunch of technical co-op finance uh stuff today. Um what we wanna do uh today is more have a, a conversation, uh have a conversation with you all. So, you know, feel free to unmute your mic um take your uh camera off and and uh things like that um and get comfortable because the biggest thing um about when we get into money is really how it makes us feel it's uncomfortable to talk about money uh oftentimes but um and that discomfort is uh where you will really start to uh see like where where your co-op is, where it needs to go, uh, how the money needs to move. So, like, what do you feel um, when you think of money and finance? Anybody want to just answer that question? Um, for me, it's been a situation of um, with like feeling about money, especially in the cooperative space, is people not having the same. Um, like beliefs about it and um sometimes like when i when, when i was first starting this one of the problems i i encountered was uh people wanting to apply like capitalist like ideals on it and like also bringing like negative energy around it and if you're not like if you're not in when you're not aligned on like your views about money in a cooperative space it can be really hard to make like decisions on what to do with it democratically i just made up that word but it's okay <laughs> no i mean yeah we understand you we get where you're going from yeah that's 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 um yeah that's real right like because how we deal with money comes from our own personal experiences habits our challenges and successes <laughs> that we've had with with money we bring we bring that in to a space so if people have like negative things about money um you know they're going to bring that in and the biggest thing is um transparency right like it's um you know we want to capitalism teaches us to keep all that stuff close to your vest right only only a select one or two people are supposed to really know what's going on in the business or like what the money's looking like, right? Um, but it, in co-ops, we want to break that stigma, right? Mm -hmm. We want to, we always want to educate people about like what the finances of the business are and where they can see themselves in it and how their day-to-day -day activities may or may not you know, influence that, uh, you know, in which way, in what ways do their daily activities influence that, you know, positively or negatively? Matt, you had something you wanted to add about your feelings on money? Sure. Yeah, uh, it's kind of to twofold. Uh, the first feeling I get is sort of like a feeling of like, like spaciousness and like freedom. Because um, I feel like in our system, you know, money is freedom. Uh, and, um, on the other side of the coin, uh, on a personal level, I feel like stress and, uh, like fear about money. When I think about money and finances, um, I'm switching careers. And so that is a different, more tougher feeling than like freedom and, and, uh, intellectually thinking about it. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. You're, uh, you're uh, making me think of uh, so in the 
and the financial literacy work you saw me doing with the uh, with the young people, you might have noticed that there were some little placards that said like had emotions on there. Like and one of them, I think, was anticipation that was in the video. Um, so one of the things I like to do with that is once people have their budget up there, because uh, one of the tasks they have to do is that as they're sorting through all of the transactions and things on the ground and and also trying to keep straight uh oh i need my 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 housing my transportation my my food <laughs> um, and oh yeah a budget also has to have savings right income expenses savings um you know as they're going through all that they also have to like separate out the emotions and things like that and find all of those little things in the middle of all that and the 60 seconds really is to emulate the pressures of life Right. Like you have to do all these things and it never feels like you have enough time. But uh, even under all the pressure, you still have to remember, like, the basic things we need to cover. Right. That a budget can't go over a certain amount that every dollar needs to have a job. Right. As you're talking about the right. You got this money and you're not sure what to do with it. Well, that's an opportunity to um, to give it something to work democratically to decide maybe there's one, two or three different things that we might be able to do with money, right? And so let's put it in those buckets ahead of time before the money comes so that when the money comes, there's no argument about, well, what are we going to do with it, right? So try to have those conversations um, ahead of time. Um, and again, like uh, as I was saying, like so once people have those line items lined out, I like to take those placards and say, now, what um, if you think about anticipation, which line item on on there is, uh, uh, most drives that emotion, right? Like, is it your transportation? Uh, some people feel, uh, you know, some people feel um, stress and stuff over like housing and things like that, because maybe it's something that was a, a thing with them, right? So doing participatory uh, activities like that and and getting people's like true thoughts and emotions on that can help you understand where maybe some of those triggers might be coming from when you are bringing up money conversations and then you can uh, you know have those conversations in a better way. Um, so yeah, that's why we ask that question, right? Like, how do you uh, feel about money? Because um, the way we feel uh, often dictates like what we do with things, right? So you gotta have to, we gotta find a way to like um, channel those emotions and, and understand like why we're feeling the way we're feeling and then comparing that to like, well, what are our shared values? Where are we trying to go as a, as a business? And, and because I'm feeling this, this way, one way or another, is it still in line? So we just got to slow down and, uh, check um, how we individually feel and, um, and and make sure we're, you know, we can get to, uh, you know, a kind of shared uh, understanding of where we're at with money. Um, yeah. Um, so next slide, please. Thank you all for indulging in that conversation. We're going to keep it going, <laughs> right? So, uh, how does it make you feel uh, to share money with other people? Um, what are some concerns or opportunities? Um, I'll tell you my my general inclination, right? For me, um, I, I agree with Matt. Like, I feel like uh, money is abundant, right? Like, if we sit together long enough, if we plan together long enough, we can manifest whatever we need to do what we need to do. The problem is we're not patient enough to sit through the planning to get to what we where we need to go, right? But that's my uh, that's my general uh, uh, way that I feel about sharing uh, money, right? I don't mind to uh, share money with people; that's just natural with me. And you're gonna have other people, uh, but that's also not always a good thing, right? So I gotta have people on my team that are making sure that like I'm uh, not sharing too much, <laughs> right? Or that like we actually have it to share, right? So you gotta have like accountability people around you, right? So they're, they're a concern, but um, 
uh, another thing, you know, when I think about this is um, I tell people all the time, like, think beyond the transaction, right? Like, I'm, and I'm going to use use an example um, for, for this, right? So one business I'm working with right now, uh, we're, um, we're operating out of a church, right? We're operating out of a church, has several members and all that type of stuff. Um, the church we're operating out of has some like structural issues, right? It has like some things wrong with the air conditioning and some things wrong with uh, like the cabinets and things like that. So in working with this project, um, I presented the question to the co-op, what would it look like if we got financing to sort of renovate this kitchen a little bit? We're using it too. We don't exactly need the full renovation of it, but what would it look like if we uh, used uh, our access to capital, right, through connection with C Commons to help to renovate this kitchen, right, on its face, you're thinking, well, we don't exactly need all of that, but what is the long-term impact of what doing something like that uh, could do to relationships in the community? If those congregation members come into a freshly redone kitchen that has, you know, all these new things and they're using it for their church dinners and things like that, um, you think they're more or less likely to show up to our Taco Tuesday event that we do every Tuesday because we're using that building as a commissary kitchen, right? You know, so it's like sometimes you gotta think beyond uh, the transaction and um, and that's how I think about like, sometimes there's opportunities to share. And if we're being too, uh, if, if we're being too um, focused on uh, the transaction in front of you, maybe you may not see a deeper relationship uh, that can go. Um, but that's a little bit about concerns and opportunities. Uh, how do, uh, who else wants to give some input? Like, how do you feel, uh, how, how do you feel about sharing money with other people? I mean, I, I, if I had more money, I would share with as many people as possible. But I think in the co-op context, what's like unsettling to me or different to me is that every financial decision impacts more than just me. It impacts everybody else in the organization. It impacts the business as a whole. Um, and I just don't know like how, and I'm not worried too much about the accountability, but I am worried about making the right decisions in terms of if there is a boost of, of money or if there is, you know, opportunity for profit distributions, you know, I don't want I don't want to make impulsive decisions like, oh, let's all get that in a bonus versus let's pay down the loan or let's put this into a cushion like a rainy day fund in case, you know, there you know, our business is kind of um, I, mean, I mean, I don't I want to say peaks and valleys because we don't have we don't have a a product necessarily. So we're we're always responding to RFP. So there are there are really great times and they're also lean times. So like how much do we know to square away? for in case we need it. So like, those are the decisions that, that make me nervous. Um, hmm. I don't know. No, no, that makes uh, perfect sense. And maybe after you could help me respond to this, but um, I mean, you really just uplifted the power of, of the co-op model, right? Traditionally, those decisions are held by, again, a, a small set of people, right? And so uh, maybe those decisions about like everybody's jobs and all that stuff, like they didn't have any input, right? If they had input, maybe they would have chosen to uh, cut back their own salaries and stuff instead of like having to lay somebody completely off or something like that, right? So that's the power of, of the cooperative model is your governance structure should have uh, some mechanism to always bring those conversations in. And really you're deciding on many of those things, a, a, a general way you're gonna handle those things ahead of time before they come. And then if when they come, the thing you already, the one or two ways uh, that you decided to handle that don't fit, then you have the same mechanism to come back to and to decide before you go and spend it, 
right? Uh, this is, we thought we would do it this way, but it didn't work. What are some other options, right? So it's just always creating space for the collective, right? Everybody, uh, and when you talk about how profits are shared, um, that's, you know, generally uh, not that difficult to figure out because in the co-op, it's based off of what you contributed to the bottom line, how many hours you work, how many widgets are produced. Again, something that was decided ahead of time that's in your uh, operating agreement, your bylaws that say that you're going to share uh, profits based on, you know, what, you know, what, how you contributed to it. So um, there should be something uh, that you're deciding on, on these things ahead of time. So when they come that you're not uh, having to make a decision in a moment. Now, that's not to say you're not going to have to be flexible and pivot and adjust. Like things never work out as planned. <laughs> right. They never do. But we also uh, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Right. You you got to do your best to uh, um, foresee these things, discuss them and plan out like this is my strategy um, and accepting the unknown and the unknown. You move it back into that same process once the unknown is revealed. Uh, Esther, you want to add something? Oh, sure. Yeah. So I think. Um, with like. Um with with co-op with it with um if you're a newer co-op especially it can be tempting for example just to distribute all the money back to the worker owners at the end of the year all the profits right like it's exciting um it's not not exciting um <laughs> you know so um so but then maybe something will come up and you're like, oh, shoot, the next year you realize you should have saved a little money in your retained earnings, right? The retained earnings for the co-op that stay in the co-op business, right, um, from that profit. And that's where something like with participatory budgeting, um, one element can be visioning together and, and setting your values. So sometimes I feel like values at first when you're doing them, they can seem obvious or a little like frilly right like oh this is just or amorphous you know but in reality it really helps to get folks on the same page and during those times when you do have to make difficult decisions like do we give ourselves and we'll talk about this a little more later too like do we give ourselves a pay raise or do we give ourselves health care it can help to point to, okay, what do we do? Or or do we pay ourselves all the profits individually? Do we pay all that out? Or do we put some back in the business? And if one of your values is we want to sustain and grow the co-op business, you can point to that and say, hey, do we have enough like set aside for emergencies? There's a question from Safa. Yes, uh, just following up and emphasize the concern that uh, uh, Karian uh, said, which is something about the democratic process at all. And especially in communities, because why are we doing co-op? Because we, we're trying to support uh, underserved, for example, underserved communities. Uh, the issue here is how to financially uh, be safe and not put yourself under risk because you have all these votes all the, those people who should vote on uh, almost each decision related to the budget and st such uh, is there a mechanism like um, Mev was saying about like how to in, in a democratic system uh, to appreciate experience or uh, academic uh, vote versus other, uh, which some votes who are not really uh, no, um, uh, who are not really experienced uh, who, um, expert on that. Uh, Safa, I, I believe I get exactly where you're coming from, right? And um, I think that uh, uh, I think a misunderstanding that a lot of people have about like co-ops it it can sound like everything is a utopia and we all got to vote on everything and all that stuff um but 
uh, what you do is like the um, the membership in a co-op can choose to appoint a certain select committee of people who are charged with such decisions, right? And then um, again, you decide that ahead of time. For example, if you know somebody on your team is a CPA and should be dealing with the money, right? Like the 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 full membership votes on who that is, and they always have a chance to uh, vote somebody else in or something like that. But at the time when they're in that position, right, or that team is in that position, they're the ones that are making decisions and making the sound decisions. And that is always a way to bring it back so that the full membership can evaluate what they did, but the full membership doesn't have the responsibility to do the thing that like the experts should be doing. Does that make sense? And, and you know, that's part of the co-op difference too, because, you know, in a co-op, it is one member, one vote. That That is, a, you know, and so, like Mabel was saying, um, the full body can decide on what, on what, what is voted on. Like, like for example, operational day-to-day -day stuff. Maybe that's um, set aside for different roles. You know, however, things like um, that impact everybody. Like, say, do we get healthcare or not, or what's our salary, or that sort of thing. That can be more like okay, these these impact all of us. Let's make this decision together, you know, and and that does go against some of what society teaches us about who has knowledge and what knowledge looks like, you know. Um, if knowledge only comes from education or mm -hmm. through lived experience too, and I think that's part of the power of co-ops is respecting those different kinds of of what people bring you know but but at the same time like you know um uh, i i would want a bookkeeper to do bookkeeping and not me you know what i mean so i think yeah there's some element of being thoughtful with like all right how do we navigate yeah. this yeah and, and and that's bringing up something else for me too it's like um <clears throat> like don't be afraid to to speak up right like um when you're in your when you're in your uh membership circles and things like that and you feel like um maybe I shouldn't be making this decision and maybe the other two people over there talking about it shouldn't be making the decision, right? That that's something um that's something that you bring up and you always uh raise so that there could be, you know, periods of um let's invite somebody in to the group to to help us, uh, you know, look at our finances and look at like what does it take us to operate on on a full year, and if we see a certain profit, you know, Me and you, to, I'm not making this shit up. It all out. You getting sexy and sexy, and you single, your bet. Oh, zoom bomb! That's a zoom bomb. I think. <laughs> I think that's a zoom bomb. Hey, that was a light one. Okay, I've seen a lot worse. Okay. <laughs> I've seen a lot worse Zoom bombs. Um, but yeah, right. So like these are these are conversations. Uh again, it all starts with conversations. Getting on the same shared body. Who should like identifying clear roles and responsibilities, who should be doing what? And and um and always being able to like come back to the table and um and and really suss out like the concerns and 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 uh, putting structures and systems in place, uh, like everything you guys are bringing up, like bring that up with your co-ops, right? And figure out systems that you would put in place to mitigate um, the concerns that you have, and then try it out, right? Try it out, see if it works, and if it doesn't, come back to the table and reshuffle it, because uh, a lot of this too is is trial and error, and um, and uh, figuring out how to learn together and, and being burned by, you know, <laughs> like your mistakes and, and learning from them, you know, um, like I, I messed up a lot with money. <laughs> um, and that's probably why I have some today is because uh, all the times that I messed up with money, um, you know, it, it helped me to think back about like, I don't want to feel this way again, right? Back to our feelings, right? 
I don't want to experience that again. You know, I wanted to be able to do this, right? And uh, looking at, um, like, uh, always tracking, right? Looking at, like, what I've already done and what were the results. And, and, and I know I need to do something different with my money so I can get the type of result that I need, right? So it's always uh, tracking and things like that. Next slide, please. We can talk about some of this stuff <laughs> like all day, <laughs> you know. Um, all right. So uh, how has your co-op engaged with each other around finances already? Um, so, again, I'll start with, uh, and again, I'll, I'll start with uh, some of the work that we worked on with the Ajani Group uh, in partnership with uh, some of our C Commons work. Um, so how how we engage uh, uh, the co-op members about money is like, um, you know, we sit them that we sit with them and ask them like, uh, ask them questions like, what do you need? Uh, like, um, like how much money do you need to to live the lifestyle <laughs> like that you want to live, right? what um what is the uh what is the uh minimum wage and and not only what's the minimum wage like um what's the the living wage uh that people need to have to to live around here right and like have those conversations and um and 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 put together budgets with them like ahead of time right um and then we uh uh, we talk about the things that the business needs, and then we uh, have different members of the co-op go out and get estimates for those different things uh, for what the business needs and work with them together to, like, come up uh, with the budget for, um, like, for operating the business, right? And then we uh, uh, take that and say, um, and I'm skipping over some stuff, but uh we uh help them figure out like what is uh the the fixed cost that they need um to to have to cover um like if no sales come through the door <laughs> right what's the fixed cost they need to have and then um what are the uh the the direct selling costs and all of that stuff and then uh show them uh through like a break even calculation um, if you guys wanted to do this, right, if you wanted to have this type of salary, if it took you this, uh, if you had to pay rent this much in this type of location, right, you would have to sell this much product every day, every week, every month to be able to do that. Do you guys have the capacity to do that, right? And, and so we bring them in on that stuff, and then we say, okay, well, let's try that out, <laughs> right? And then they try it out for a little while and see if it's uh, realistic, right? And then it's always an ongoing, it's always an ongoing and moving thing. But we're uh, uh, set certain targets and then check it at, you know, at specific intervals. You know, after a month, after two months, okay, this is how we have been operating. Um, is it working? Is it not? <laughs> if so, why? And, and and just like creating space to like continuously um, engage over the finances of the business, right? So uh, can some folks talk about how they uh, started or already engage uh, each other around finances? As members of your co-op, do you, have you seen your co-op's finances? <laughs> Can you share a little bit? Um, so we have an open budget policy. Anybody can look on our shared Google Drive at the housing co-op that I live at and see, you know, how much each committee is given, how much the rent is, what, how much we spend on groceries, that kind of thing. And we just had to have, we've had to have a couple of hard conversations about raising the rent because the utilities went up. Um, we rent our property. So the landlord raised our rent uh, and then we lost a, uh, one of our side incomes, which was a trailer that we used to rent out and we can't rent that out anymore. And so we had to raise the rent to cover that cost. And those were really difficult conversations. I didn't want to raise the rent. I wanted to lower the budgets of the other committees. 
And so, yeah, that was just a conversation. One of the conversations we had around finances and where our money is coming from and how do we cover costs that were unexpected. So, so how did, um, so how did you guys decide on like what to do? Um, or, or let me take that back. Um, um, what were the conversations, uh, uh, leading up to, uh, Leading up, like how often were people brought in on like uh, like what the uh, what their daily cost was that hey uh, we have this income covering this like um, like when when did that stuff happen or was it just like mm-hmm. sprung on people when it when it was mm-hmm. there? We broke up the conversation into several different meetings, and uh, so the, all of these questions didn't come up at the same time. The first one was the utilities. Uh, and so we talked about that first and people got, we had information sessions where people could ask the accounting committee about the budget and just like learn about it. Um, and so we did that first and then that vote happened first. And then we kind of delayed the other votes. Um, and we had another conversation at a separate meeting about the trailer and like what the options were for the trailer. Like, do we want to repair it? Do we want to move it? Do we want to uh, try to rent it as is? you know, those types of conversations. And then um, we had different members put forth uh, proposals about what to do about it. Uh, The accounting committee really put together the numbers so that people could make informed decisions about like what the different options would would cost us. There you have it. That's like, that's exactly what you do, right? Um, You inform people, right? Once people uh, see that it's going to cost X amount to renovate, Right. Then they have to consider where do we get that from? Like, where are we going to get the renovation money? <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like uh, just keeping people involved. And, and once people see the facts and give and, and like Drew said, give them opportunities to present their own proposal. You know, maybe they know something you don't know, <laughs> you know, um, but um, by by doing the work to have to present the proposal now you know, either they're going to say, hey, that thing that was already presented to us was way better than this thing, or they're going to come up with something that that um, overcame a challenge um, that they were presented when they said, well, we don't like that option. Right. So like, yeah, Drew, I I love uh, I love that. And that, you know, that's where we hope to get in our, you know, in our cooperative ventures is, you know, you have clear systems set up, but there's opportunity for input built in throughout so that people can make informed decisions. I mean, you you put it uh, very uh, beautifully. Thank you. Thanks for letting me share. <laughs> it looked like, so, um, who is this? Uh, I think, uh, Karen, it looked like you wanted to say something. Me? No, I... I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't have oh. anything to say. <laughs> okay. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Um, trust building. Esther, you wanna uh you wanna you wanna take the trust building? Yeah, I'm I'm wondering if maybe maybe uh just for time check I could maybe I could run through a few sections like some of the steps, you know, and then like a few of these and then um, so we could go to your uh, spreadsheet. Does that sound good? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. sure people want to do num- actual numbers. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. No, that's great. Cool, appreciate it. Uh, so trust building. Um, next slide. Um, so, um, so you know, just personally, like think of a time you experienced a great team, and what made it great. So think of some of the elements that worked well in that situation. It might have been at a past job or in a club or organization you're part of. And think of a time you had an experience with a bad team. Like, what made it a negative experience? Yeah, keep going, please. Uh, Thank you. So, like, I want to think, and Maeve actually um, thought up of this uh, triangle of what what creates that strong team. You know, and it's showing up for each other, shared values and trust. And I think, like, um, you know, something I really value with Ashani 
is how much we we established that baseline. We had several meetings like weekly where we talked with each other just about whatever was on our minds a lot of time and mixed in some co-op elements um, and really established the strong foundation to work from. And now decisions are quite a bit easier, right? Like, you know, I feel like we, we can talk through things, you know, we understand each other, um, you know, like, um, uh, let's see here. So, um, Christine and I were actually talking the other day about how if there's discontent, it can breed uh, gossip, right? Because people are unhappy. And so how do you translate that into something that's healthier as a group? And so to consciously talk about shared values, talk about your share yourselves, um, can really help build some of that foundation. Next slide. Uh, so as we were discussing earlier, values can drive some of these conversations and decisions of how money is used. So having these conversations up front and check-in points, like say maybe every year or two or, or more often if you need to, um, can be really helpful. Including if you have uh, newer people on board, it can be a good time to have a workshop or a training of like, who is your, what is your co-op? What does it stand for? I know at Equal Exchange, we had co-op like 101s and Equal Exchange 101s for all new employees where we had, um, you know, standard training that we'd give and update once a year. Like we had an education committee and we'd update it and everyone would get a training and onboarded. Next slide. So financial training and education. Uh, next slide. Um, so we're, when we're talking about worker owner education, um, this can be part of instilling, this can be a major part of instilling a good foundation with which to discuss finances. So just thinking about like what your member, your co-op members, your co-op's member education looks like, what topics does it include. Like oftentimes it'll be like, you know, have the basics of your co-op, like articles, bylaws, policy book, okay. And then also, um, and then values, you want to write those out. So everyone's on the same page. Um, and then also including co-op 101. What is a co-op? Because not everyone, you know, we want to make sure we're all on the same page about what a co-op is. Um, some discussion about your co-op's history. Make sure you don't lose that history of your co-op. I've seen that happen. And it can just be a big loss of experience and time and knowledge. So make sure you include that. Um, and also industry-specific knowledge which is really going to impact your finances too. Um, you might want to have some links to resources of how to assess your industry's market or, you know, just some resources like industry websites, related websites. So say you're in design um, and graphic design, maybe you have links to some good resources on keeping up to date, up to speed with graphic design trends, right? Something like that. Um, yeah, and that, that'll impact some of, you know, keep it an eye out. Like, like with construction, for example, um, COVID really negatively impacted construction because of supply chain issues, right? So if you're up to speed with what's impacting your industry, you can make more conservative financial decisions, right? Um, also, you want to think like, with new and existing members, it's important for everyone. I think I think like worker owner education is dynamic and ongoing and really needs to translate to actual implementation into power and for worker owner or for members to have that power, to have a say and have a voice. It's not just knowledge for the sake of knowledge. It's to be able to translate that into something actionable. Um, and so like with financial training, Maybe you do presentations um, and maybe you do a 101 and then you could also like do a 102 where you use, you know, you can use like your co-op's actual financials to go through and like understand them together. 
I've seen even cops just like sitting around and talking through what their bookkeeper gave them. You, it can start with something as easy as that. Um, and it's okay if you don't have all the answers together. You can start writing down your questions and look up answers to those questions together. Okay, like in a collaborative way. Um, alrighty. So I just included this as an example of some of what Equal Exchange had when I was there for their member education. Um, so worker owner orientation, weekly hour long educational times, a curriculum for people on worker owner track that you check boxes of like making sure you did XYZ, um, a mentor buddy system. So like, you know, if maybe, maybe you have someone who's done the financial trainings, partner up with someone who's newer and like go through it together, you know, that could be a fun activity. Next slide. Um, and, you know, like, here's an example, like, um, so say, say many people in your co-op don't see themselves as financial types. Their eyes glaze over when you're reviewing spreadsheets. So, so you want to start thinking, like, why might someone feel this way? And based on that, like, what are ways to engage members more deeply over time? So, um, so like, for why someone might feel this way, you know, maybe, maybe they've been told, maybe they've not had exposure to finances before, much experience with them beyond, like, basic, you know, their own personal finances. Um, maybe they don't understand it. Um, maybe it feels like it's not for them. You know, it's hard to translate these numbers into something real when you're not real familiar with what they mean, right? So, you know, um, we're, yeah, so some of the member education or elements described are ways to engage people a little bit more deeply and utilizing actual financials from your co-op can really help with and, and connecting those to decisions down the road that are coming up can really help with having those conversations and understanding and being more engaged. And when members have power over decision making, which, you know, you can you can have co-ops where members are disempowered, right? But we, we're looking at power, uh, member power. Um, you want to connect this to like real decisions. So like, hey, we're going to have an influx of money. What do we do? Or we're going to be tight on money. Um, you know, how, how like what what the, what are the decisions we'll need to make on the radar in the next year or so or half year or month? And how are and decide how are we going to make those? Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um one way that we engage again a, a, another project we're working with um <clears throat> here in West Virginia, one of the ways we engage members. Um uh so you know came to the conclusion they need to go for financing and all that type of stuff so one of the ways to engage the members was uh we selected different departments like a marketing department um you know operations and, and an equipment department and then they each went out and uh again got estimates and put together budgets of what it would take to do uh what they needed to do and uh, and then they all came back and presented their findings and, and what they wanted to do until we came up with, uh, okay, this is the, um, this is the, uh, this is, uh, uh, the budget for, you know, how these operations are going to be successful. This is what, this is what they're doing. So those, those are ways, um, some small ways you can engage people. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so regular engagement of uh, worker owners. Um, can you click in a little bit so we got the uh, there you go. Uh, within the context of uh, co-op governance, um, uh, communicating and making decisions uh, in a cooperative way. Um, uh, that again, that's not something that's uh, common, as we've said multiple times, uh, you know, in the co-op, you want to have governance structures 
to uh, to communicate regularly and make decisions. Traditionally, um, you know, that again, that's done uh, in a way where um, more people in the business don't have that are actually working in the business day to day don't have a you know any way to um, comment on that or provide input. Um, it's something that uh, successful co-ops uh, need to invest effort in. Um, you know, and it's it's a huge topic. Um, you know how your governance is set up. Um, you know, it's starting with the worker owners or or you know uh, whoever the member. It starts with the members. The members decide who the board of directors are, and then the board of directors decides who's the who's the management is, and it uh, and it goes uh, you know cyclical in this input cycle. Right. Next slide, please. Um, so, um, and there's often, uh, uh, you know, there's often confusion, um, between, you know, governance versus operations. So, uh, like, where do you see, um, oh, we skip, uh, skip a couple of slides. Where do you see co-op finances, um, in these, um, you know, in these mechanisms, mechanisms in the governance? Uh, in the operation, um, the governance is often, um, you know, it's going to be a bigger picture uh, type things. It affects uh, many people um, in the co-op. Um, you know, big big deals is a place for members uh, again to, to use their voice. Like, so you know, you're going to be looking at things like uh, how much should people get paid. Um, should we be able to, uh, um, are we in a position to provide health care, you know, um, and then the daily operations, um, how many customers you need to walk uh, through the door, right, like uh, to to be able to uh, hit your hit your sales targets and things like that, um, you know, doing sales budgets and things like that are very important. Um, that's another thing we do with the co-ops we work with. You know, we help them determine uh, how many sales they need to come in through the door um, every day to be on the pathway toward sustainability. So that, um, and that's done in a way where everybody on the team knows. So if they're not seeing those numbers, then naturally people start to think, well, what are ways we can get more people in the door? Because if we don't hit these numbers, then we can't cover payroll. And then I, you know, I have to reduce my salary. Right. So it's like having those conversations to where people can see themselves like in the numbers um, of what they're doing. And, and again, doing it in a way uh, that is um, transparent. Uh, next slide, please. Can I ask a question, actually? Sure. Go ahead. Um, so. At the example of like setting wages has has come up a couple of times in this session and in other sessions about that, like that's the kind of big picture decision that the members might all vote on. When you talk like in your experience working with co-ops, when folks are setting wages as a as a membership, are they like are they going person by person and saying like you make eighteen twenty-five. You make thirteen twelve, or, or is it more of like a, like deciding what the wage range is going to be, and f like how how into the nitty gritty are the members getting in that conversation? Well, um, it it's um, it varies because it you know it's it's really unique uh, to the individual business to the to the members you know where they're at personally financially and all of that type of stuff so I, I can only talk about how it worked with a specific group <laughs> and and how we did that right um what we did was first we looked at the jobs that they were coming out of like where, that they were coming from to do this cooperative thing and then we looked at that wage and said if your co-op was able to pay you this wage, would that sustain you? Would that be, uh, would that suffice, right? Um, and for most of them, the answer was no, right? Because 
West Virginia, like uh, saying like eight seventy five, maybe ten dollars an hour. Uh, you know, uh, one of the members used used to work at a at a um a cemetery, right? And so like it was a state owned state job, like you know they they pay very low um low wages um and so we started we started from there from that point like right like what do you need to make to be sustainable and then from there um uh we set the wages that way and then we also looked at um like what was the cost of living um right so then we landed on well uh you need to make 15 dollars an hour right and then we said uh, and then we looked at uh, the the cost of living um, in the area, and it was actually seventeen dollars and stuff, right? So then the, then the wages uh, uh, got increased for this particular co-op based on the um, the cost of living. Yeah, we could have started there and all of that stuff, but it was it was more about um, them again getting to see themselves in the numbers and seeing like. What does this business need to be sustainable for them? And then uh, uh, going from there saying, uh, expanding their mind to like what real sustainability is like, right? Is it really sustainable if you're just taking that because it's, uh, it's more than you were making, <laughs> but is it actually covering your cost of uh, like what you actually need to, um, to um, not just survive, but to thrive and to be able to really afford where you live and not go paycheck to paycheck and then we can start getting into the conversations about assuming you hit these numbers this is what you need to be able to make the profit and then that's where the fun starts right that's when you get to start sharing things and all of that type of stuff does that answer your question Emily? yes thank you okay next slide um we got about 30 minutes left too um i actually want to um let's can we skip to the participatory budgeting so we can we said it a bunch of times let's at least get a we were almost there yes <laughs> let's at least get a definition <laughs> of participatory budgeting um so it's a democratic process in which uh community members or co-op members decide how to spend uh part of a public budget now this is um this is from a like a, a public uh context there actually really isn't any real good definitions of participatory budgeting um but um it gives people real power uh over real money so participatory budgeting started in porto algier brazil in 1989 as an anti-poverty measure that helped uh reduce child mortality by nearly 20 percent since then, uh, participatory budgeting has spread to over 7,000 cities around the world and has been used to design budgets from states, counties, cities, housing authorities, schools, and other institutions. The New York Times calls participatory budgeting re revolutionary civics and action. It deepens democracy, builds stronger communities, and creates a more equitable distribution of public resources. Um, mm -hmm. And I would say about that definition, right, like um, the reason that uh, mortality rates were reduced and things like that is because uh, it is more likely than not that the values of the people putting together the budget in a non-participatory way didn't align with the values of the community at large. So think about that in terms of your co-op, right? Like, does your budget truly reflect um, the values of the membership, right? Is that budget really reflective of uh, of the values you want to see, right? Are you paying people uh, minimum wages uh, because you want to get to a profit faster <laughs> or something like that, right? Like, is that going to work for the rest of your membership, right? So uh, the the fact that... I mean, the whole concept of having um, everybody on your team uh, participate in how the budget is developed, or at least having a presentation of what the budget is and, and an un getting an understanding of how it was developed allows people to put their input to call out like, hey, like what we're doing here doesn't match with our values and, it, and you have a space to like adjust your budget 
based on like your priorities, right? So uh, next slide, please. Um, so uh, you want a, a design process. So um, a steering committee that represents the community uh, creates the rules and engagement plan. So like your membership might uh, decide on a steering committee that's going to design this participatory uh, budget um, uh, committee. And, and and maybe a member of that committee uh, is your bookkeeper or your accountant, or they help and they and they help advise it, right? Um, then they're gonna brainstorm ideas uh, again, as Drew said, through meetings and uh, uh, tools. Uh, you know, members share and discuss ideas. Uh, maybe in person meetings, you know, they share and discuss ideas for projects. Uh, then folks uh, develop proposals, right? Um, Volunteer uh, budget delegates, uh, budget delegates develop the ideas into feasible uh, proposals, right? Um, and then the uh, membership votes on uh, the proposals uh, uh, that most serve uh, the community needs. Um, and then uh, winning projects, uh, uh, your co-op or your institution uh, will. Uh, dedicate those funds towards those projects, right? Um, there was something else. Oh, as far as like, now I know we've been saying voting, right? Um, but there are other ways to um, to come up with decisions um, in co-ops, right? Now, uh, you can also decide this thing, decide these things based on consensus where, you know, everybody um, like you're not going to make a decision on salaries unless everybody agrees, right? Uh, some things you might have consent, right? You might, or or one of the things we do in another group I work with is uh, we, and again we set this out ahead of time, right? For any decision, we start with consensus. Every we have to have consensus, right? And if and if we don't have consensus, it's predetermined that we move to consent, which means that can you live with the decision without any major objection, right? So that is decided ahead of time. And the mechanism to, uh, to uh, all of that, if we can't reach consensus and we can't reach consent, then we vote, right? And then it's just a simple, you know, majority, you know, majority rules, right? Um, and again, with consensus and consent, there's like debate and discussion, you know, like, so, and it's a value, right? You can't just block a proposal and not have um, a clear reason for why you're doing it or, you know, a clear alternative or things like that, right? So if people are just blocking to be blocking, then it's built in as well um, to where, you know, the co-op can reasonably move on, right? But again, um, you don't have to be pigeonholed into one type of way. Some decisions, consensus and consent would be great. You know, for some things, you might need to vote on it. It really just depends on what the decision is. And the most important thing is that y'all talk about it ahead of time and decide mm -hmm. that you're going to do X, Y, Z using, uh, you're going to make decisions using uh, one of those decision-making methods, right? Consensus, consent, voting, right? And you decide that ahead of time. Let's just go through a few things and then we'll move on to the definitions and all that. So here, I just want to make sure to point out, um, so you'll have these slides as a resource. These are some techniques you can use um, in, in your co-op and making decisions. Uh, next slide. Um, and, you know, you want to, like, like Maeve was talking about, uh, you want to decide what counts and also, like, who votes and Again, like this is where like your hat can like what hat are you wearing can come in. Like, are you wearing your board hat or your member hat? Like, um, as a board member of a co-op, you might think of like broader like visions, and then as a member, you might be thinking what matters to me as a worker or what matters to me as a farmer. You know, whatever position you are in. Um, next slide. And then we were talking earlier, like, what's what do you think like? Like, think about what it's important for people to learn, um, like what we're talking about today. But on the flip side, too, this is really important. Next slide, please. Um, what is for, important for workers to unlearn? And Zia mentioned this earlier. 
Um, cause, and this, this to me, I, I want to, I wanted to point this out because I've seen co-ops go under because people couldn't, what weren't on learning, working together. Um, and when they hear, when they're hearing the word ownership, um, it was interpreted in the way that they know, which is a more capitalistic way, an individualistic way. Next slide, please. So, are you are you coming at uh, one before, please? Um, are you coming at it from a competitive and individualistic mindset, or a collaborative and constructive mindset? You know, and again, this might sound basic, but it is it is critical? It is absolutely critical, and that. If you're if you're willing to have the right mindset as a team and you work on that, that can help you succeed. Even if you don't know all the ins and outs of, you know, all the things that it takes to run a business, which is a lot. Um, these these this is like one of the major things. Uh, next slide. And thinking about what it means to work it, own it. So like this participatory budgeting. Um, Looking at our finances from a say a worker trying to make money for your co-op and working hard, um, that you know th those are part of that's part of what it means to work it and own the company. You know, th collectively. Okay, thank you. That's a really awesome spreadsheet. We'll talk, we may talk about that. So, and, and it's got some really basic steps, right? To start talking about finances. Uh, which are co-op members, right? Um, and literally, step one, right? <laughs> learn some, uh, learn some key terms, right? So uh, there's uh, retail price, um, you know, with the customer, uh, the customer's price per item, the cogs, right? Um, getting really people really comfortable with these business terms, right? Because you know, a bank is going to ask you. <laughs> for a lender or a funder is going to ask, well, what is your cost of goods, right? They want to know um, it's the direct cost uh, that goes into making your product or service, right, uh, to produce the item, supplies, materials, wholesale. Margin, right? Um, people, uh, these are business terms people are going to hear, and it's important that your folks understand them, right? The uh, margin is your retail price minus the cost of goods sold, and that's the simple profit of an item sold, right? That doesn't consider like the fixed cost, um, but like it's your selling price minus what you directly cost you to make it. Um, and that's a great place to have the conversation about how your pricing is, right? Your pricing should be high enough that it covers um, the direct cost of sales, and there should be enough and that your price should be high enough to cover um, what it costs you to make a sale, uh, what it costs you to operate your business, produce your product or service, whether or not anybody comes in the door. Um, you know, unit sold, uh, gross profit, uh, which is that's your margin uh, uh, times the number of, of units sold, right? Um, and then fixed costs, uh, those are the things that, uh, um, the things that the uh, that that cost you roughly the same amount every month, uh, regardless of whether you make a sale or not, uh, rent, salaries, insurance, utilities, bookkeepers, all that stuff. I see a lot in a lot of businesses. I see people setting prices for their products or services before they've even considered what it costs them to make it. I've I've seen it. Um, countless times and a lot of times people are responding to uh like what 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 some customers say about the price or what they think an idea of what a price is maybe again it goes back to their own feelings about money and that they they feel like they're trying to provide a, a, a affordable product or something and somehow they let that bleed into well I can only charge this much and they're not setting their prices based off of uh, what it actually cost them to make and to produce that and to have the uh, infrastructure to be able to do that consistently, right? Um, you set your prices based on, like, your costs, right? Like, they, your prices have to be enough to cover your costs. Uh, if you want to scroll down some, Annalise, uh, two is, you know, practice using that stuff in a simple exercise, which um, 
And again, stop right here. The three the three key questions uh, um, you want to ask is, uh, will your co-op ever make money? <laughs> if so, when will it return a profit? Uh, will when it turn a profit? And three, how much money uh, will we need uh, to make that happen, right? Like, have that, uh, uh, think about um, how often, like, the people, the, the folks in your co-op, uh, how often you guys actually sit down and consider these three questions, right? Like, how often do you consider those three questions? Um, so anytime you're thinking about money and what your co-op is doing, uh, these are uh, questions you should stop and ask yourself and, and maybe facilitate um, some meetings over it, um, you know, as part of your budgeting process. Uh, scroll down uh, to the next slide. Again, a, a simple break even model. Uh, you can do this, uh, you can do this with folks. Um, you know, you, uh, you write in the type of item, uh, the retail price, um, and it shows you the calculations, right? Um, and uh, so it's a great tool to use. It's visual, um, and and you know, and it's not so complicated to where uh, people who don't see themselves, you know, as accountants, they they should maybe you work with your accountant to help you put this together. But this is something that I think you can bring into a meeting or work with as a team, and everybody can sort of get on the same page about it. Um, and again, scroll down. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to uh, to um, uh, figure out what your fixed costs are. Um, and so it's a really simple worksheet that you could do. Um, scroll down. Um, and then uh, the last part of the last part of this, if you were to print this out, you would be able to see it a little bit better. Um, but um, you know, you want to uh, look at what your co-op's uh, uh, startup budget is. You know, um, what we need, uh, what do we need to start? You know, start listing things out. Uh, you want to have an ideal uh, version of what you need to start. Um, you want to have something that maybe is, like one of the things that we did with, a, uh, again, a project we're working with, a, a food truck. Uh, eventually it's going to be a food truck co-op, right? We started with ideally these are the things we want, right? Which here in this column, it was the food truck. So we put like the food, full cost of the food truck and all of that stuff. But realistically, there were things we were going to have to do with that project to build up the customer base to uh, kind of get out into the community before. I mean, it's going to take 19 weeks just to get the food truck built, <laughs> right? Like, so, um, and then on top of that, we had to uh, come up with a proposal to um, get the a full amount, and it's a high capital investment, right? So we had to think of what's a lower bar as we can ask for, which ended up being some tables and some tents and some marketing and some thing in a cargo van where they can get out into the community, hit a couple of local fairs and festivals, uh, try their food out in a way uh, that helps us to justify uh, if we did have a food truck, um, this is what customers would pay. These are the types of events we would go through, go to. And it's one thing to have that um, anecdotally, and it's another thing to actually, like with the project I'm talking about, we've actually hit fairs and festivals um, since we received a little bit of that reduced um, version of things to where we can go back and make an ax for the food truck with solid numbers because we actually had ex, you know uh, the requisite number of customers we think that it would take them to break even um, at a series of these events right we've actually gone to an event and served that many people right so it's, it's a little more direct evidence right but doing um, and we use this worksheet to come up with the things right to come up with the things uh, so, you know, you, you're going to do your startup budget, uh, you want to do an aspirational budget, you're going to make some assumptions, right, and then you're going to get up here 
at the top on, in section five, and you're going to try to break that down month, you know, month by month, you know, for like a, it's like a 15 month period. Um, and then six, step six, if you follow all the steps, you will know how much cash your co-op needs to start, right? And so this is a great activity you could do at any phase of your business, whether you're startup, whether you're expansion, wherever you're at, um, uh, you can, you can do this and see what the next step is for your, for your business. And you can do it in a way that's participatory. Everybody would, uh, you might give this to everybody and, and have them give a version of what the next step is. And then you guys come back and then you work one together or something like that. Um, yeah. So I guess I want to stop and, uh, we could take some questions. We got 10 minutes. Um, another thing we're going to be doing as part of this, uh, work with, uh, UT is like one-on-one -on -one consultations and, and different things. Yes. Uh, like that with the Johnny group. Uh, so uh, we tried to pack a lot of stuff in in this, you know, the short time we had together. Um, but yeah, so I just want to kind of open it up. Yeah. Questions. And, and one thing that I just want to mention real quick, um, just from my loan officer hat, you know, I've done, I've done it a year. And to me, the main thing is if you're if you as a member or staff, you know, if you can articulate, articulate the finances from your own words, you know, an own understanding of what's going on, you can always convert that to the terms later or kind of match up the terminology with, with the, what your own words are. But, you know, I want something I look for is that you have owner, real ownership over what, what's going on in your business, you know? So, I just want to encourage you, like, if you're able to articulate that already, that's that's a that's a great start. Um, yeah. So, thank you. I saw Julian's hand. I think. Did you have a question? Oh no, no question. No. No put, questions mean we just did a heck of a good job right now. I put uh I put the coaching sign up link in the chat. If you are interested in in talking more with Maeve and Esther about finance stuff, or you want to consult with Drew or me about other pieces like governance pieces of your co-op or other things, uh bit.ly forward slash co-op coaching is the way to get in touch with us about that. Um, and then we'll connect you. Um, we are, we have a contract to work with Esther and Maeve only through the end of 2023 right now. So get those requests in soon so that we have time to connect you before, before the end of the year. Don't, don't sleep on it. And we're always available as well. Like I know, I know, yes. you know, you don't have to only contact them. We got these things like that, um, but we're not going anywhere. We're here for people. We're here for y'all. Um, we exist because uh, we just want to help people. So um, we'll figure out if we can't help you, we'll figure out somebody in our network that can uh, that can help you. So never be afraid. Uh, never be hesitate to reach out. You know, we're always available. Yeah, and like you know, if you do sign up for the resource, you know, the collabor the consul consultation, we can go over like you could bring your um, finances with you, and we can like look at your finances together, or projections, or like business plan, and kind of connect some of the dots a little more. That would be great. It is such an incredible honor to be here with you both, Maeve and Esther. It's really exciting that we get to work together. And thank you, thank you for being for being a part of this project and for leading us through a conversation about finances. I think one thing I'm really gonna take away from this is the triangle of uh, like team building. When I first saw it, I was like, all right, teams, important, whatever. And then as as you were both talking about it, 
it occurred to me how much there's there's something about a co-op project that there tends to be an assumption that the team is just going to come together naturally by virtue of the fact that we've all decided to do a co-op. So like there's, there's people want to do a co-op. So the team will happen. And, and the idea that you can be proactive about making the team happen, giving people opportunities to show up for each other and building that practice. I, I think that that's, I think that's really powerful and it tends to be a missing piece as we're focusing on like, let's write some bylaws, let's build your governance, let's do a business model canvas. You know, building that team is is really essential. Yeah, I mean, it's your, it's your foundation, right? Like, um, uh, I, I forget how we say it, but in one of our, in one of the T comments things, and, and I think what we do at the Johnny Group, like, if if we don't have a certain set of uh, shared values and 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 um, trust, like at the foundation, then there's um, nothing nothing is gonna save us from uh, from like bad decisions or not being able to work together and and, and conflict and challenges because like conflict and challenges are gonna come like in business we know we know that right we're all entrepreneurs or you know started a business somehow like nobody's doing this co-op stuff if they don't have uh an ownership mindset already right and it takes um there's going to be conflict <laughs> right in that and if we don't have a strong set of uh, a shared values and trust um at like at the foundation whenever that conflict comes it's going to break us apart Right. So we got to have that ahead of time so that when when things uh, naturally come, like when when Mabry doesn't file the tax return on time, I know that like I can like we can still have a conversation. I can correct myself. I can, you know, like I can uh, be held accountable. But I trust that like Gary, Esther, Tia, my co-op members still love me. You would treat me as a person, right? And that we're, but we're going to work through whatever we needed to work through. If we didn't have that trust uh, and shared values at the beginning, yeah. then when that came, it would have been just the reason to point a finger. See, I told you maybe it was this, and I told you it was that, and I told you blah, 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 right? But none of that stuff ever comes up. We give each other grace because we trust each other. And then work gets done. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Great. Well, thank you all for being here and for spending another Wednesday night in, in co-op land. Uh, Viri, thank you so much for your interpretation as always. Um, I can't wait to see where your co-op projects go next. I'm excited to hear more. Reach out to us. Let's chat. Have a great week. We'll see you. Thank you so much. Thank we'll you. We'll see you at all the fun ACBA stuff in October. Thank you, everyone. Thank Good you. night, y'all. Bye. Bye.